Welcome to Smoking Barrels. On this episode, we're taking a look at the Springfield Armory Prodigy. All right, Rice, what do you have for us today? All right, hey ho. Uh, so I have a treat for us today. This is the Springfield 1911 DS Prodigy. And DS stands for double stack. Uh, I know that for, so this is a double stack 1911. And I know that a lot of people, um, they call these 2011s, but... I was going to say, the yeah. double stack 1911 chambered in 9mm, that's quite a handful. That's quite a mouthful. Yeah. Um, and, and can you tell tell the audience a little bit about how 2011 is kind of a proprietary name? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, over here, um, we have a uh, Staccato XC. Um, so this is the creme de la creme of, you know, 1911 double stack 2011s. But, you know, as you were saying, you know... Staccato coined that term, 2011, so, you know, companies like Springfield um, can use it, uh, you know, freely as they wish. Why this is such a big deal is because this is the first ever mass-produced 1911 double stack, double stack 1911. Um, so, Ray, prior to this mass-produced Springfield Armory mm -hmm. prodigy, where would someone have gotten a double stack 1911 previously? Amazing question, Ho. Um, so, previously, you know, before this prodigy, you know, People have to go to custom shops like this uh, Staccato, or it's formerly known as STIs. There's Atlas Gunworks, but if you wanted a double stack 1911, you have to go to a custom shop. You know, and they're marvelous. These guns are the creme de la creme. Um, nothing compares to it. But the problem is, is that they're all hand milled, handmade. So with that comes a really heavy price tag with it. Um, for example, like this Staccato XC, I think it like MSRP is for 4,300 starting. But, you know, Springfield just broke the code. Um, this mass-produced 1911 double-stack MSRP is for $1,500. So more for the masses. Yeah, yeah. You know, it allows the everyday people like you and me to get into the game. So one thing I want to point out is the big difference outside of this double-stack uh, ma uh, magazine well is, so here you, we have our standard 1911. Um, this is a proven platform. Um, it served in our military since 1911 all the way to 1985, believe, I believe, um, and then it was replaced by the M9. But, you know, this 100-year-old design, um, one, the trigger is amazing. But the differentiator between this and this is, sorry, thanks for keeping me on track. The main differentiator is, outside of the double stack magazine, is that this has a polymer grip module. So it's actually two pieces. We have our frame here, and we have a separate grip module itself. So on your typical 1911, this is all one piece of metal. Um, so that's why it's single stack. It's got the weight to show for it. It, it definitely does. I mean, this, this baby is heavy. Um, for, and it's a single stack. It weighs almost the same thing as the uh, Springfield Armory. But you know, this 1911 platform, it's, it's proven itself, and then like like we said before, um, there's nothing. The trigger is uncomparable. The trigger on the 1911s are the gold standard. That triggers that new guns that are made today are based off of. Should we get into what everyone wants to know? How it fits, how it feels, yeah. how it functions. Let's get into and that. compare it to the various uh, yeah yeah so stages. Should we start with the uh, main event first? Then let's talk about the prime. All right. So, the Prodigy also, by the way, was, it just got introduced uh, this month. It was released on September 1st or the 3rd, I believe, so it's only two weeks old. Um, you want to wait first? Yeah, let's give it away, just, yeah, for, just right. to give some people uh, some context of okay. the he its heft. So, the Prodigy, uh, the 5-inch version, is 37.8 ounces uh, from the factory, without magazine. Just over two pounds. You want to tell people how about the... Uh, the grip? Some of the, the ergonomics there? Yeah, so this thing is a natural pointer. Um, it points well, natural point of aim, shoots well. Um, the grip module, is this called, Springfield calls it the adaptive grip module. Um, it's the same grip that's found on their uh, Hellcat Pro. Um, at first, when I got this, I was kind of skeptical about it. You want to feel it? I mean, yeah. It, it's really it's, smooth. It's, it's very mm -hmm. velvety. It's very yeah. smooth. So I, uh, I didn't think it would work. So I think some people might prefer like a more aggressive. Yeah. Some people love that sandpaper yeah. feel in their hand, yeah. but this is a little bit more velvety. It's, yeah. a, it's a more subtle, medium, uh, uh, aggressive texture. Right. But you know, 
I, I felt the exact same way too. Um, and I thought that this thing was gonna fly out of my hand when I shot it. But this adaptive grip, um, as there's, as you shoot it, and there's that recoil. It just, it just grips. And as you just grip it longer, the harder it grips. I mean, it, it's amazing. And this is also, you know, it's a lot more thicker than your standard uh, 1911 grip. Um, but for me, I got extra, extra large hands. And this is actually the first firearm that I can actually hold like a normal person, where I can wrap my hand around the, the trigger guard. I mean, typically, normally, with any other gun, I usually have to like sloth grip it, and I brace that trigger well in the front. So for me, I have small hands, uh, okay. size small mechanics wear, and uh, ergonomically, the trigger the the trigger reach is is perfect. The safety is also it's a little stiff. It's new. Oh, it's sorry. Um, but one thing that I notice with s small hands, I can't reach the slide release without breaking my grip. Oh. So I've overcome that with uh, I can overcome that with my left hand, my support hand. Uh, but how does how is what is your uh, experience with uh, the the three main controls there? Yeah, so it has an ambi safety. You can see it on both sides. Um, the left one is actually a little bit wider than the right one. So for your left-handed shooters, sorry, <laughs> um, but easy to manipulate. Um, it clicks. I know that with some of the first batches, people had uh, problems with this. It was like a little bit wiggly, but the batch that I got is great. And then regarding very the positive, yeah. Click. Yeah, and you'll notice that the slide catch is very, like, flush. It is. It's very it recessed. Is, yes, it is very, very flush. And when you try to break it down, it's a, it's a little bit hard. When you compare that to the uh, staccato, the slide release is a little bit more uh, extended, pronounced. pronounced. So. Yeah, yeah. And then, But for me personally, I, got, I wear extra, extra large gloves. And this thing, I felt like it was made for me. I can reach this perfectly. Um, and then for what? Did we, what was the third one? The just magazine release. Magazine uh, release. Yeah, yeah. So the magazine release it has a pro, uh, pronounced magazine release. It's awesome. Um, if you actually stick a magazine in there, it actually pops up a little bit higher, mm. like maybe like a millimeter higher. Nice. And so it just makes it easy. Um, but we can switch on both sides. But honestly, those controls and functions I love. Like, nice. I wouldn't change one thing about it. But. As you know, you know we played with this before um, when we first got the firearm. Let's talk about our first range trip. Yeah, all right. Yeah, first range trip. Um, and this seems to be the common problem that a lot of users faced um, when they were reviewing these guns initially. Um, so the hang-up issue. You know, so this gun is known to hang up. Um, and due to that hang-up, you know, people are saying that it was causing failures to feed. I mean, when we shot it, we initially didn't have any problems initially and then we shot about maybe 250 rounds together okay. yeah and then we tr we tried our hardest to get it to kind of like you know fail to feed and then it turns out that uh it does not like limp wrist things so right? yeah when i experienced uh some failure to feeds shooting one-handed or mm -hmm. support hand only yeah and i got i believe four failure to feeds out of those 250 rounds yeah yeah yeah, I think I was able to reproduce one of them, and then actually the staff over at the range was able to reproduce yeah. it as well. So it turns out that, so just going to show you that just safety, we're clear. 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 Clear, no mag. So what turned out the problem was is that, so you can't tell if you're sliding it, racking it back quickly, right? But if you go back slowly, rack it slowly, it hangs right here. So it turns out what the problem was is, if you look at it, we have something called a disconnector right here. And that is for the trigger. So I'm gonna press the trigger and you can see it kind of move um, as I pull it. So what happened was, is it would just hang up. And then you can see that the catch is not engaged and it's just hung up. When I first got the gun, uh, without me holding this trigger, it would just hang up on its own. How is the slide action? Slide, Can you this, describe that? This this is butter. I mean, I felt nothing better. This thing's a flash shooter until I got to play with this for the first time. <laughs> so f for context, this is good. This is great. Yeah. Or even perfect. Yeah, this this is amazing. I didn't know that it could get better than this. You want to um, try a trigger pull gauge? Yeah. On, you know on oh, how much? Please how do much? the honors, man. 
Let's see if I can get some context of how much effort it takes to rack the slide here. So we're at 11 pounds to rack the slide. In comparison, the staccato, it's so smooth, the slide action is so smooth. Let's, let's put the hammer down first so that we have a fair, fair trial. Seven pounds, seven and a half pounds. Oh, can, can you get this one? So this is a normal 1911. It's, I thought this was good when I first got this and I tried this and then this morning I got to try this. <laughs> it's beeping. It's, ain't, it's, it's a over, no go. It's, over it's 15, no go. It's over 15 pounds. <laughs> it's a no go. It's a no go. Yeah. But you know what? You're, this, Kim, this is a Kimber Custom too. This is by no means bad. But just this is on another level. This, I don't, I don't even know. So I would call this butter. I think this is queso. Okay? <laughs> I have no idea how to describe it. Let's tell people a little bit about the, uh, the trigger pull in the field. Let's compare the triggers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all triggers are generally compared to 1911 triggers. Yes, this is the gold standard. So, all right, so let's see. We have a little bit of take up and pull. Whoops, sorry, I'm trying to do this in front of the camera. So we have that little take up right there. It's about a millimeter. And then I do feel a small wall right after, before that pull, but, and the reset, amazing. Like, give people a trigger pull. Yeah, so trigger pull. So Wait. these have been reported. I think they said four and a half to five pounds. Mm -hmm. But this batch that I got, I mean, I didn't have that weird, weird wobbly uh, safe, safety. And also the trigger for me has been consistently coming in at also for people that aren't familiar with 1911s. We have this ambi safety up here. But there's also a grip safety down here as well. So in order to pull the trigger, you have to depress this grip safety. So I'm gonna try and do this with my left hand. All right. That ain't right. That ain't, that's not right. Hold <laughs> do on. another. Hold two, on. two pounds, All 12 right. ounces, right. just try. under I'm three gonna, pounds. I'm gonna turn this way. I'm gonna turn this way. <laughs> I'm gonna get depress the hammer. Whoops, sorry. Oh my God, hold up. You want me to do it? Um, yo, bro, I'm trying to, like, only touch this and, like, do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. What we got? Three pounds, nine ounces. Should we do another one for good measure? Let's do one more. One more for good measure. All right. All right, so the secret with doing it in front of a camera is you got to hold it like this. What we got? Three pounds, four ounces. Three pounds, four ounces. And when we go to the staccato, just for comparison. Oh, man, so this, this isn't is, my gun. Now, this is the gold standard Ooh. here. There is some, uh, mod, uh, there's some adjustment you can do to the, to the staccato. So there's a little, you, you, ha you can control the, the pre-travel, but we're looking at, wow, that was one pound, 15 ounces. Two pounds even. Wow, that's 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 unreal. So May I see that? Ho? Of course. Why why talk to it? So again, the price difference between the two. This is for the masses. You, if you want to spoil yourself, uh, and it's within your budget range, I highly recommend it. It is such a great uh, experience. It actually made me a better shooter. I totally <laughs> believe that because you know they say that. Oh, the gun doesn't make you the better shooter. So for the staccato, I was able to come back on target after each shot much faster and much easier. And it's, it was so smooth and so flat. And also the grouping was much tighter mm. as, as compared to uh, uh, another any other gun that I would have uh, yeah. tried. So it is very smooth and it legitimately does make you a better shooter um, given the, the basic fundamentals. Yeah. I mean... I, I would never believe that, uh, you know, the gun makes you a better shooter, but, you know, shooting this staccato, I mean, I never shot the XC before. I can't, I, don't, I can't even imagine shooting this, but it allows you to, you know, like you said, I mean, you can test your theories, hypothesis, mm -hmm. you can try to see what grip works just because it shoots so flat. Yes. You know, so 
So in that sense, I do believe that also. But this thing is... How's the Springfield against the original 1911? Oh, In God. terms of recoil and control. This... So I guess it kind of goes in phases. So... This is like an original 1911 compared to this. And then uh, down the line. I mean, this original 1911, when you shoot it, it like it wants to come out of your hand. It slips. It slips. After about like uh, maybe 10 rounds, I always got to adjust my grip. So you're saying the Prodigy is much more pleasant to shoot than much, the original 1911. Much more pleasant, yeah. This, I've never had a firearm or shot a firearm that shot as well as this has. So... For the value, street price, uh, MSRP fourteen ninety nine, I believe. Yeah, fourteen ninety nine. Would you recommend this as a mass produced nineteen eleven double stack chambered in nine millimeter? Yeah, one one hundred percent. So you know that I'm a nineteen eleven fanatic and a revolver fanatic. But the problem with that platform was that mag capacity. Um, but this just changed it all up. Um, and at this price point. It allows everyday people like you and me to get into the double stack 1911 game. And this is, I believe that it's a very versatile gun. You can do whatever you want with it. I mean, you can go to competition with it. You can carry it. It could be your home defense gun. You probably don't want to do it as a car gun just, just in case your car gets broken into. But yeah, I highly, highly recommend it. So, Ho, where did you get this gun from? So... My friend Joe Groscope uh, graciously loaned this to us so we can do a fair comparison between the three different oh, platforms. Uh, you can follow him on uh, G4 Unit on Instagram. G4 <laughs> Unit at Instagram. Okay, so, Ho, oh, I just want to show our viewers um, if they do, if they are considering purchasing a Spring Curl Prodigy. You know, we talked about the grip already. We talked about the slide catch, sky release. Um, but what the thing that we did not talk about was actually the sights. So, this Prodigy. It has a blacked out rear sight, but it's a U-notch sight. Um, so, you know, U-notch, Wilson Combat's a huge advocate of U-notch sights. It has a fiber front that just captures all the light. That fiber optic sight does pop. Yeah, it, it just pops. Uh, I don't know if we can line this up, but this thing pops. And also, it comes optics ready. That's nice. It is. That's, you know, the, new, that's yeah. the new hotness these yeah, days. Yeah, man. Um, I love having the option. Me, personally, I like iron sights, but um, this whole plate actually comes out and it has a sight attached to it which is dovetail so you know you can switch it out if you want but you can put on whatever plate you want right now the only one that's available is the hex dragonfly but in october springfield will release uh plates for the acro and the uh yes. rmr um you can just put Should that and hollow. yeah um, yeah aim point and then those plates also have a rear sight on it as well so you can co-witness it and if your sight's out no problem um also it has Amazing slide serration, forward and back. Um, it does not have that flared magwell like the Staccato has. Uh, looks like they are planning on releasing something, looking at the grooves here, but it does have some curvature right here. It's not beveled, it's rough right here. But you know, the magazines, um, the tip of it is the same size as a single stack 1911, so I mean, you won't have any issues uh, putting it. Is there it anything in. you would like to see carried by the after aftermarket to support it? Or is it good out, out of the box? You know what? It's amazing out of the box. But one thing for the apps for the market would be it would be nice to kind of get a flare mag well that we couldn't attach. Uh, maybe, you know, something with the trigger. Make it lighter. Even lighter. <laughs> I mean, that's already a great trigger. It, it as is it a is. great trigger. I, I love this trigger, but, you know. Well, you're, comparing comparing it, you're comparing it to a, to a Bentley. You're right. You know what? <laughs> we should not do that. Just to make it clear. These are two. They are they. These are for two different segments of the market, um, and they have a three thousand dollar price difference. This is amazing, um, and just this is like, it's God mode. I don't know. <laughs> God mode. <laughs> um, yeah, and then also if we could get a compensator, I think that would be nice. You know, you could see that the XC here has a compensator, so it shoots even flatter. I mean, this thing shoots. Flat enough as it is. Yeah, be nice. this Staccato XC has a built-in compensator yeah. in front already, so it, it would be nice to see a an aftermarket option for the, the Prodigy. Right. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, we were able to review the Springfield Prodigy against the high-end uh, Staccato. Uh, we, Springfield Armory has a great uh, mid mid-price option for the everyday man. 
Uh, we think highly recommend it. Really recommend it for a great mid-price option offering from Springfield Armory. Any closing thoughts, Ray? Um, yeah, Springfield, they just changed the game. Mass produced double stack 1911. But, you know, any of these options, you can't go wrong with. Um, the classic design is classic, it's iconic, and it'll do its job. This allows you to play with kind of the big boys at a good level, you know? Um, and this, if you're rich, go for it. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Join us on the next episode of uh, Smoking Barrels. Oh, also one thing, one more thing. Shout out to the Creative Potato Studios for supplying us with these shirts. We got merch.